Heavy rains continue drenching large areas of China. Now the upper reaches of China's longest river are hitting the highest water flow rate in a century. NTD's Tiffany Meyer brings us more. A major flood has struck the upper reaches of the Yangtze River, China's longest river. An internal document we obtained shows the river's water was flowing at a rate of over 80,000 cubic meters per second. It also explained that it's forecast to exceed 90,000 cubic meters per second. According to local Chinese media, the river's flow rate was so high that it will soon break the highest record recorded in the last century, if it hasn't already. Officials in Zhejiang, a city located on the southern shore of the Yangtze River, issued an emergency notice on Monday requesting that the entire city be evacuated. Now we focus on another area along the river, the Three Gorges Dam. Flooding is getting worse in some areas near China's famous Three Gorges Dam, the largest hydropower project in the world. Experts have warned that the dam is on the brink of collapse. That means as many as 400 million people may be at risk. But in a twist, local Chinese media outlets and social media platforms published an article saying, sorry, the Three Gorges Dam has done its best. Please stop criticizing it. The report says the dam is at its wit's end, adding that over 50 rivers in eight provinces have already exceeded their flood warning levels. It also says that no matter how powerful the Three Gorges Dam is, it cannot let the water flow backwards. Officials in charge of the dam project have warned people not to pin their hopes on the Three Gorges Dam, as its capacity for flood storage is limited. Back in 2007, Chinese officials claimed the dam was designed to withstand once-in-a-millennium flood levels. Over half of China is now waterlogged. Now, at the same time, earthquakes have struck. According to China Seismic Network, within two days, six earthquakes, magnitude three or higher, hit various areas of the country. Four of them happened on Sunday. One hit the city of Tangshan, 90 miles east of Beijing. The quake clocked in at a magnitude 5.1. More than 30 consecutive aftershocks followed. About 40 years ago, the same city endured a magnitude 7.6 earthquake. According to official figures, 240,000 people died, making it the third deadliest earthquake in recorded history. Unofficial figures say the real death toll was three times higher. City officials called Sunday's quake the aftershock of the bigger one 40 years ago, adding that locals have nothing to worry about. More earthquakes hit in the southwest province of Sichuan and the special district of Chongqing. Both areas are located along the upper reaches of the Yangtze River and upstream from the Three Gorges Dam. Two quakes, one magnitude 4 and one magnitude 3, hit the areas on Sunday. That's after a magnitude 3.2 earthquake hit the same area on Sichuan a mere 10 days ago. That same afternoon, a magnitude 4.4 earthquake shook an area in the southwest province of Yunnan. One day later on Monday, two more quakes, this time magnitudes 5.0 and 3.4, struck two regions in Xinjiang. The U.S. State Department issued a travel advisory over the weekend for China. The security alert warns U.S. citizens to exercise increased caution in China due to the rising risk of detention and bans from leaving the country. U.S. citizens could face longer jail time without U.S. consular support or information on what their alleged crime is. This comes after Beijing passed its draconian national security law in Hong Kong. The draft includes people from outside Hong Kong that could potentially be punished for so-called violating the law. Lawyers and activists have expressed concern that China could use this as extraterritorial jurisdiction against anyone anywhere in the world. It's seen as an attempt to stifle global criticism of the regime. The State Department did not say what prompted the alert, but did add that U.S. citizens could be targeted, even for sending private messages. The alert added security personnel may detain and or deport U.S. citizens for sending private electronic messages critical of the Chinese regime. The security alert comes as tensions remain between the two countries over a number of issues, from trade to the virus pandemic and human rights abuses in regards to Uyghur ethnic minorities. The water level of China's largest freshwater lake hit record-breaking levels. Regions around the lake face the risk of serious flooding while water levels continue to rise. NTD's Juliet Song has more. 
Regions around China's biggest freshwater lake are now bracing for new rounds of unprecedented flooding. China saw its worst flood in recent years in 1998. And this past weekend, the water level inside Poyang Lake broke the 1998 record. The lake is located in areas already among one of the worst hit in China, the southeastern Jiangxi province. Local authorities raised the flood alert response to its highest level. A Chinese state-owned media reported that over 500,000 people have been evacuated, but some are still trapped without any basic supplies. Now I don't have any food to eat. I don't even have any rice at home. What should I do? Miss Yu's village at the south of the lake has been submerged. She is over 70 years old and hasn't received any government aid at this point. Three hours away, northeast of the lake, a resident said the flood burst many embankments. We're in a very miserable situation. The embankments have burst and water is overflowing. Traffic also shut down. The roads are gone. They're all broken and submerged. Zhang now relies on boats to get around. He fears the flooding will get worse. China's National Weather Service said the water level inside Poyang Lake will continue to rise over the next days. Flood control remains a challenging task. Jiangxi province has over 1,500 miles of embankments surrounding rivers and lakes, and almost 90 percent of these bodies of water are seeing water levels going above the warning level. Han Lu and Juliet Song, NTD News. The Chinese regime has sanctioned four U.S. officials and one U.S. entity. This comes days after the U.S. sanctioned Chinese Communist Party officials for serious human rights abuses in Xinjiang. The CCP vowed to fight back against the sanctions, saying the U.S. interfered with its internal affairs. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, has targeted four Republican politicians and the U.S. Congressional Executive Commission on China by placing sanctions on them, Chinese officials said on Monday. It's retaliating for the sanctions the Trump administration placed on CCP officials last week for human rights abuses against ethnic minorities in China's Xinjiang region. Senators Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz are among those targeted. They have pushed legislation to punish CCP officials in Xinjiang. Senator Cruz wrote on Twitter, the Chinese Communist Party is terrified and lashing out. They forced over one million Uyghurs into concentration camps and engaged in ethnic cleansing, including horrific forced abortions and sterilizations. These are egregious human rights atrocities that cannot be tolerated. Representative Chris Smith from New Jersey is being sanctioned too. He called on the world to condemn China's forced sterilization, abortions and detention of Muslim Uyghurs in Xinjiang, calling it genocide. Last week, the U.S. Treasury Department sanctioned four Communist Party members and one entity in China for serious human rights violations against ethnic minorities in Xinjiang. The action is taken as per President Trump's 2017 executive order, which builds upon and enacts the Global Magnitsky Human Rights Accountability Act. The Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control sanctioned the Communist Party Secretary of the Xinjiang region and the Xinjiang Public Security Bureau, among others. The CCP vowed it will definitely fight back against the U.S. sanctions. China's foreign ministry spokesman said it was interference in its internal affairs and that it threatens its sovereignty. This is the latest in a rising tension between the two superpowers. The relationship has been strained after the CCP virus pandemic and the national security law in Hong Kong. Not to mention the Trump administration's countering Beijing's aggressive posture in the South China Sea with a commitment to ensuring the international rule of law. Kevin Hogan, NTD News. In response to NTD Washington correspondent, the State Department confirmed that Beijing's sanctions on U.S. officials are retaliatory, but that they won't stop the U.S. from holding CCP officials accountable for their human rights abuses. The department says the U.S. imposed sanctions on the officials for violating human rights, particularly of religious minorities in Xinjiang. Meanwhile, the regime imposes sanctions on U.S. officials who work tirelessly to expose those abuses. The department also said that there's no moral equivalency between the CCP's sanctions and the actions of countries that try to hold the regime's officials accountable. In the UK, as lawmakers urge the Foreign Secretary to target human rights abusers in China with new sanctions, one member of parliament says the atrocities happening now under communist China are parallel to what happened in Nazi Germany. Our UK correspondent Jane Werrell has this report. 
As the U.S. sanctioned four Chinese officials for their human rights abuses against the Uyghur ethnic minority in Xinjiang, the U.K. drew up its first list of designations. It includes notorious individuals and organizations in Russia, Saudi Arabia, Burma and North Korea. This is only the first wave, the first tranche of designations. We'll be making others in due course. He hasn't ruled out sanctions on Chinese officials or Hong Kong's chief executive, Carrie Lam. And the more that countries such as the United Kingdom and the United States unite and let the, the Chinese Communist Party know that it is intolerable to subjugate their people and to let those who profit from slave labor camps and the suffering of the masses, hopefully it'll become less and less worthwhile for them to trade in human souls. On the, mystery... the UK Parliament in June debated human rights violations in Xinjiang, an autonomous territory in northwest China. It was in response to a report that found Beijing used mass sterilization and forced abortions to suppress birth rates in Uyghur ethnic minorities. All these things that we associate in Europe with the atrocities of the Third Reich, of the most beastly act of the most venal, villainous, totalitarian state the world had yet known, Nazi Germany. Story after story that makes breaks my heart and makes me weep. Coming out of communist China, there are parallels. There are parallels from what happened out of those extermination camps uh, in, in uh, Eastern Europe in the Second World War. The Foreign Secretary says the new sanctions enable the UK to engage with countries while at the same time holding individuals to account for their human rights violations. Jane Worrell, NTD News, London.